welcome back to another episode of Grand Tactician The Civil War. This is episode 3 of the Union playthrough. Off camera I've made some changes. I have changed our organisation of the Navy a little bit. We've kept the Potomac flotilla the same as it was. I've changed blockade and squadron 1, moved the ships around a little bit. Some of the smaller ships have gone back to the pool uh, and we've got all kind of large ships in this blockading force. They're going to be blockading this area around uh, the Chesapeake Bay. We have got Blockading Squadron 3, which is just on the south coast here, kind of around Tallahassee. Well, I say Tallahassee. I only said Tallahassee because that was the name I seen on there. <laughs> uh, Apalachicola Port. Not sure if that's correct, but that's what we're calling it for now. So they're blockading this area. Um... Not quite close enough to that one, so if we move them a little bit, I think we'll be able to blockade both those little ports. Mobile is not currently blockaded because I'm not sure if I move these guys over, will I still be in reach of New Orleans? But I am going to build another blockading squadron anyway. Um, so, anyways, that was blockading plus squadron three. Then we've got blockading squadron six, which is blockading kind of Wilmington. I'm going to move them a little closer, actually. Uh, and then we have got Blockading Squadron 2. <laughs> you might wonder why it's out of order. It's simply because that's the way it is in the list. And they are blockading uh, Charleston and Savannah. And I will add an extra couple of ships to this once I've got them built. Um, blockading Squadron 4 is just off the New Orleans here at the mouth of the Mississippi. Squadron 5 is blockading around Texas. And we are building another blockading squadron in Boston. Well, I'm not building. I'm kind of getting the guys together, getting the ships together under Commander Henry K. Hoff. So this will actually not be Squadron 2. It will be Squadron 8, I think. Well, whatever it is. And this is going to be the one that's going to go down and blockade Mobile, Alabama. Um, this leaves us with a few smaller ships spare, which... I'm going to use a scouting vessels, unashamedly stolen from another guy's videos, uh, Brambra, who I've recommended before. Check him out for his stuff. But yeah, so he uses his small, small uh, river fleets, like not for combat or anything. He pops them in the rivers, so he gets intelligence on the Union. I never really thought to do that, which is, but it's a great idea. So I'm going to go ahead and copy him. <laughs> um, Army of Ohio is still forming there. Uh, other than that, nothing else has changed except I have raised another army, the Army of Missouri, which, I mean, is going to have 3,000 men. So not really an army, but they're going to head towards St. Louis and build a couple of forts, and then it'll give Lyon a place to pull back to if he needs to with some reinforcements by the time he gets there, hopefully. Or uh, for them to push south and support lines, depending on what happens with these Confederate armies in Missouri, Arkansas. We'll see. So... In addition to that, actually, if we have a quick look at the fleet status here, I am building quite a lot of smaller ships. Uh, we're building... This, these are going to build up our river fleets. So we're building a bunch of gunboats here. Uh, some brigs, which are, are going to be used to support some of the smaller blockading forces in the Blue Water Fleet. Um, and then we've got a few of these tiny little ships tender gun sh ships tender gunboats. Just they're going to be our scouting force basically once they get ready. We are building four um, monitor class ironclads. Obviously, they're going to take a while to build. And then we've got these ships that are kind of returned to port. We've got this captured schooner, which I'll, I'll use them somewhere, probably in the river fleets. But once we've got some of these available, once they're back in the pool, I'll start working on putting those river fleets together. But for now, we're going to get started because I've talked enough. If you missed the previous episodes, there is a link in the description. And there'll be a link in a pinned comment. Also, if you're into this game, then you could do worse than going back and checking out my Confederate campaign, which I just completed a few days ago. It ran for about 11 episodes, so not too much viewing, but definitely enough to keep you going for a little while. So we've had two decent battles in Virginia in the last episodes. Um, one battle involving McDowell, and then another one involving Patterson. Both times we defeated the Army of the Potomac. Now, McClellan's moving south with the Army of Occupation. Capturing uh, Beverly, I think, I believe this is. Yeah, Beverly. So we, we have actually taken that place. And we'll build 
a depot when we get there. The depot at Grafton is going to be upgraded. And in the meantime, the North Carolina squadron is coming up to give us some trouble here, apparently. Sure, what it is exactly they're hoping to achieve with their five ships and nine guns, but nothing much by the look of things. They're just turning around and going, okay. So, something to bear in mind as well is that our contracts are running really short, so we're literally on days remaining, 17 days for a lot of these troops. So, we will definitely need to do some reorganizing. Um, because we will lose a, a chunk of men when those contracts are up. Um, we do not have a whole lot available in terms of finances at the moment. I'm just going to pump a little bit more into industry. I want to pop some into recruitment because we had nothing in there. So obviously we want some recruits if we can get them. But I don't want to push it too much because we're on BBB Plus already and we're building some ships here. And all that stuff costs money, of course. So our Mississippi Squadron, um, still waiting on a couple of those ships to arrive. I think it says two of them are disabled. Oh, yeah, so not quite ready. Have we got anyone else to send there? Yeah, we have. Let's, let's, let's send this uh, second-rate steamer with nine guns. It's not a bad ship. We'll send that to support this. Squadron. Um, lots of disabled ships actually, and the ships still kind of traveling between. Squadron 3. Let's see, which one was Squadron 3 again? Maybe I should have named these differently. <laughs> well, squadron 3 is this one. Okay, so that's. Yeah, they're blockading these two smaller ports. I think I might actually also recruit some men at Fort Pickens, our little stronghold at the bottom here. Let's see if it is here somewhere. Fort Pickens, yeah, let's see if we've got anybody to stick in there. We don't have many men available, but we do have some. We've got almost 4,000 men ready from Ohio, that's pretty good, so maybe we'll pop them into one of the units, actually. In one of the armies, I should say, sorry. 4,500 from Wisconsin, some men from Tennessee. I kind of don't want to overload the armies too much with 12-month contract troops, though. I want, um, ideally, we want the two-year contracts, which is what we're working on, two-year militia contracts. Uh, but yeah, let's let's pop some guys in there. Let's maybe um, let's stick 1,500 men from Tennessee into Fort Pickens. I'm sure it'll take a while to get there. 22 days, not too bad. We are going to push with McDowell. While we've still got our, our contract troops in here. They opened 13 days. If we can get another battle out of these guys, that would be amazing. And it would push back Joe Johnson's forces here before they get their recruits. Let's see if we can make that happen. Other than that, there's not really a lot happening just now. Let's push our... Mississippi Squadron south towards Memphis. So I'm actually going to make a new fleet here. We're going to put that under... Let's have a look here. Andrew H. Foot. So again, it's going to be a small river fleet. When I'm playing this, usually I, I tend to not show so much of this kind of thing, like the kind of creation of these little forces. Uh, if this is something you want to see more of, let me know and I'll, I'll include more in the future episodes. If it's something that's boring to you, then do let me know and I will do less of this on camera. But anyway, so we're going to form this, just five little ships, and we're going to use them on the Mississippi or on one of these branches coming off. They'll come in handy somewhere anyway, that's for sure.
And there we are. We are struggling with morale a little bit. Let's see. This unit contains one brigade with a total of 2,000 on low morale. This is due to recent retreats, low supply or fighting spirit. Well, we are a little low on supplies. They may break immediately during battle. I hope not, but I mean, we still got 30,000 and Joe Johnson's barely scraped together 10,000. So we should be able to absolutely annihilate Joe Johnson here, but let's see what happens. <coughs> the Battle of Culpeper Courthouse, Virginia, July the 20th, 1861. So even though I said we were going to be very defensive in Virginia, we have actually been quite aggressive in this early phase of the war, but that is simply due to the troop situation. Um, once our contracts are up here for these troops, we're going to lose probably like a quarter to half of the army. Um, and we're going to have to do a bit of reorganizing. So I thought I would utilize these troops while I had them available, which I'm sure you'll agree makes some sense at least. So let's see what we've got here. It's a meeting engagement. That's fine with us. Chancellorsville. Some pretty grim terrain over here. Wilderness Tavern. Is it Wilderness Tavern? I think it's Wilderness Tavern East. It's hard to see. Um, but yeah, so this is some grim terrain to be fighting in. But that's that's fine. We'll deal with that. Let's deploy along here. Let's have a look, actually. Is there any decent roads available? Not really. I suppose not called Wilderness Tavern for nothing. So, yeah. Let's see now. If we form down here, we can come along this road towards the objective. I think that's likely going to be the best plan of action. Maybe a couple of the brigades can take this road and kind of join further up. So we're going to send three divisions along to take the objective via this road. I don't know how successful that's going to be, but we'll find out. Uh, Hunter and Heinzelman are going to take the other road to see what they can see. But I mean, it's worth noting that Heinzelman's division is actually the same size as Joe Johnson's entire force. So, I mean, we should be okay. Let's get started. I usually make the mistake of pushing too far forward, so I'm, try, I'm going to try not to do that. So I'm going to take it slow. Or at least slow-ish. Let's get these guys up here. Hunter's division, Heinzelman's division. That way we might also intercept Joe Johnson from where they're coming in here. I'm sure they'll be going for the objective the same as we are. So we're starting on a minor defeat. Just due, due to the morale. I'm assuming it's, it, it must be because we're a little bit out of supply. Uh, it's actually Keyes' brigade, unstable. Let's see what the problem is. Fighting Spirit 69, unit started broken 30%. I don't really know. Doesn't really seem to say what the actual issue is. But that's fine. Let's speed things up. Get things moving. If you've never played this game, then remember that units don't immediately follow your orders. Well, I mean, you can't set it to, but if you have the realism settings on, then units take a while to move. You've got to wait for couriers to come from uh, core level, well, army level, core level, down to divisions, and then down to the individual brigades who will then start moving. It can be frustrating, <laughs> but it is also worthwhile uh, as an experience sort of thing. This this game is... I, I do actually really like this game. I've sunk quite a lot of time into it now, um, and I'm sure I will continue to do so. If you do hear any noise in the background, I don't know if the microphone will pick it up. I, I, I'm not sure, but there's work going on in the house next door to me, so... Very noisy. It has been for a couple of days and it's very annoying. Just got to keep an eye out here, make sure we don't run into the rebels. 
Andrew Porter's brigade seems to be out in front. They're going to go through the woods. I thought they would have gone the roads, uh, the, well, the track or whatever that is. But they're going to go through the woods instead. That's fine. So we've got these guys. Burnside, he's bringing his men up, 1,122 of them. And we've got Louis Blanca. Louis Blanca? Louis Blanca? I'm not sure. He's almost there. Almost at the objective. Maybe they can take that for us. Yeah, Alright, so Hunter's division is almost in place here. Still no sign of the Confederates. Let's pop Hunter's division just here on this slightly elevated ground. But let's see what Joe Johnston's up to. Where is Joe Johnston? <laughs> Where are the Confederates? So Tyler, let's move him up actually. There we are. Miles, get him up as well. Toombs withdrawn. Oh. Toombs division is marching on the battlefield. I, th I think this is either some sort of glitch or they are taking out their empty divisions because it's still early in the war and they'll be recruiting new troops. And I guess that Toombs was given charge of a division that hasn't recruited yet and that's why it's saying this. This happened in the previous two battles. I've never seen this before uh, because I've got a notification to say such and such had withdrawn and then the enemy came on anyway, so I really don't know. But we'll see, I suppose. Either way, there's no sign of Joe Johnston. Or his army. It's 10 a.m. now, so f about four hours since the battle started. Well, I say the battle started since we started on this map. <laughs> Nothing much is happening. McDowell's army still looking much the same as it did before. So we've taken the objective. Um, I'm actually going to detach keys. since his brigade is suffering with low morale. So we'll leave them behind here to maybe guard the objective point um, and leave it at that. Oh, there we are. There's Hill. All right. Let's give out some long-range firing orders. Get these guns in place. It looks like it's two, two different... Uh, yeah, two brigades. I mean, he's got to be coming from here. So he's, he set up like some parapets here, but obviously I wasn't going to go and attack him since we seized the objective. Okay, so Heinzelman is going to meet this attack initially. Let's get Wilcox's men out this way. And I suspect Hunter won't be needed over here. So Hunter can bring his force onto their flank. Tyler's division on to the other flank. Not his guns, though. I'm going to move his guns separately. Again, the firing arc of the guns is just beyond stupid, really. You can't get a shot on them at all. So these guys are seriously going to go down here and cross down there and then come back up this way. I mean, you can't tell me that they didn't receive that order. Ugh. It's an absolute joke. It, it is really annoying sometimes, the command structure in this and the way it works. I mean, <clears throat> in theory, it's a great idea with the uh, delayed orders and things, but I mean, this is just beyond stupid. 
I give them, I amended those orders when they were still way over here. But instead, these guns are going to be lost. Because they're now just kind of hanging out on the road. And yes, I understand they're untrained, but they should never have gone down this way in the first place. Oop, let's slow this down. Skirmish has come forward here. So again, I'm going to give this battery orders to move here, and they're going to swing around from there instead of just receiving the order from the division commander who's right next to them to just go this way. And these guns still just for a stroll. Just taking their time. I mean, are they unlimbered? Is that what? I genuinely don't know. Advance into this creek bed. Ah, yeah, so that must have been the problem. We're unlimbered. Right, okay, so we've. Uh, well, yeah, so we've limbered them up and now they're at least moving. Shank, uh, why are they going here? Is that where I told them to go? I don't think so. Not sure how successful these skirmishes are going to be because there's quite a lot of guns there. <clears throat> I'm sure they managed to cause some damage to them and cause them some problems. They are losing a lot of men. Hopefully, we can cause them some trouble. Our flanking troops are arriving as well. Let's get flanker skirmishes on. Davies in to fight. So I'm in a pretty tired. Done a lot of marching these guys. Sherman skirmishes back. They were standing in front of guns firing. <laughs> it's quite uh, a big ask, I suppose. Yeah. Skirmishers are doing a pretty decent job here. Now backed up by Davis's brigade. Let's move Blanker's brigade in as well. Cause them some real trouble here on the flank. Looks like he's actually moving substantial forces to meet our left flank of the attack. So 
we are now going to press in the center. Pressing all over the place. Should make quick work of these uh, Confederates. Some Yankees there. I'm so used to playing as a Confederate. In close. Portus struggling here. Portus break. Broken. Shanks almost there on the flank. Mm. Our forces on the on the left here have taken a real pummeling. The inside's gonna break. Maybe not. It would be close. Yeah, they're done for. But pff, I thought for a second we were going to have more casualties on the left. But uh, it's actually gone all right. Speed it up. I think we've done a quite a good job here by dividing Johnston and Beauregard's forces in Virginia, so they've really been pummeled, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, that's not so well. Units barely even fought. Chasing the Confederates off the field. Yeah, 4,200 for him. Oh, that's a heavy fall. And 1,750 for us, which is more manageable for us, of course. Maybe if we continue to press in Virginia, it will be over by Christmas. Who knows? Lieutenant Colonel Reigns loses face. That was one of their guys. General Porter loses face. Was he our man? Harsh if it is. I know his men pulled back, but... The Battle of Culpeper Courthouse has ended with the army of the Shenandoah retreating in panic. My command has earned us a total victory with the enemy army running for their lives. The enemy has reportedly suffered total casualties of 4,188 men. They're of 326 killed and 1,662 captured, so one of their brigades obviously surrendered. Their morale is believed to be stable. Really? Our casualties amounted to 1,750 men, 345 killed, 277 missing, the rest wounded. Morale is confident. Supply situation, mediocre. We've captured 3,000 rifles and 17 guns. Nice. So, I mean, the road to Richmond is open and we could possibly push down there, but I suspect if we did that, he will send everybody he's got to Richmond and uh, it'll cause more trouble than it was worth. So, we are going to hang tight right where we are. Should we build a fort? We could do. If we can. Yeah, we can. Down here. So the army of Shenandoah is retreating northwards, northwest. I mean, they would clearly retreat south towards Richmond, wouldn't they? But what do I know? Do 
Let's see now. We're still 23 days away from the next policy. Oh no, he did actually retreat southwards. I'll take it back. It looked like he was going to go north. Let's see now. So, why don't we build a depot here? I know it's quite far south into Virginia, but perhaps we could make this our line. So the Army of the Mississippi has now actually got some troops in it. Mississippi Squadron 2. <laughs> uh, that's the new squadron that we're forming. Still waiting on one of the ships to arrive, but when they do, we will start sending them down. What's going on here? We are bombarding a fort. All right, cool. Patton Senior's Battalion. Right. We'll leave them to it. Polk's command, they're estimating at 6,000. Now, we still have some more men available for the Army of Mississippi or the Army of the Ohio. Well, actually, I'm going to leave it because, like I say, I want, I'd rather get the uh, longer contracts for those new guys. Banks still hasn't got no men in it. Otherwise, I would have started building some depots and things. Between these, this episode and the next episode, I'll probably do a little bit of recruiting off camera uh, for the forts and things like that. Now, if you do enjoy the recruiting videos, then like I said, just pop it in the comments and I'll include it in the video. But I, I, I guess that it might be a bit boring for people. The Crittenden Resolution. Oh, so McClellan's here, but he's got nothing to eat. We need a depot. West Virginia Department, still waiting on those guns arriving. 33 days for them. Jeez. Okay. That's obviously impacting their readiness. Nobody in the Army of the Ohio yet. How long have they got? Two days, nine, two, seven, and eleven. So just a couple of weeks at most. Then we can get moving with those guys. 18 days for Curtis's cavalry and... Green's Artillery Battery. We've got to keep half an eye out down here because I know we are going to be outnumbered by the Union. Uh, the Confederates. <laughs> Five days. Okay, so we're going to get some re reinforcements in here. McCall's Brigade has already arrived. Let's upgrade their weapons. We'll start using up some of these more obsolete weapons. The Mississippi rifle. It's still a pretty good piece of kit. 500 yard range. Let's give that out to these guys. Actually, all of these, these dudes got longer. Oh, this is because... Now, look. See the size of the units there? 321 men. 458. Uh, they've got a month left. 400 men so these are all units that are going to be amalgamated together because this is that's not a tenable unit right so that's under Franz Siegel now and even with the two combined that's down to 756 men uh, Schwegler okay so they're only 400 men so again I'm going to move them across so with that even with that that takes lines of force I mean you still got 7,000 but uh, it's not great so Grant Grand's division here. He's got that one brigade with 1,200 men. And then we've got Deitzler and McCall. Deitzler only has one month left on his. McCall is a new unit. Don't really have anybody to add to this. Um, but that's okay. We're going to leave it as it is for now. Nobody's arrived in uh, John Pope's army yet. I mean. I'm not a fan of John Pope, of course, but he'll do for now. With the Mississippi River Squadron, have they pulled back from here or something? Did I miss a notification? I 
Heinzelman got wounded, all right? I didn't, I didn't see that either. Let me just. So it's promoted Orlando Wilcox to command. Okay. Oh yeah, and it was Porter who was defamed. We'll give that to Mansfield. McDowell's fame is looking pretty good. Miles somehow became a hero in the last battle, even though he did nothing really. But good for him. Rogers at destination. Who's Rogers? Oh, the fleet commander. Okay. I'm still not entirely sure what happened to that fleet there. Squadron two, still not quite ready. Yeah, I don't, I don't really know. I'm not seeing any battle results or anything like that. What happened to this fleet? Uh, it says four ships are disabled. Presumably something happened to it. All right, we'll let them recover here at uh, Louisville, Kentucky. Confederacy issues letters of mark. Legalized piracy for them. So I'm guessing both their armies are now here. Army of Shandoah and the army of... Uh, the army of the Potomac. We're building depots. Taking a little while, but that's okay. Not in any rush. Two days. Two days. Ooh. <laughs> it's like a couple of days and this army's going to be definitely lower than this. But I mean, we are getting some new troops com coming in in two days as well. The 3rd Brigade there. And uh, actually, and Hurlbut's uh, Brigade as well. So it's not going to be too bad. We'll have 5,000 new troops. Give or take. Plus some guns and a crittening arrived in nine days. But still, not the best. But it could be worse. 13 days left for Militia Act 3. Finance has taken a bit of a pounding, but not, not, not too bad. So I feel like this is a good place to leave it. We'll have a quick little look over things. We're doing quite well here. We're, we're building depots and just kind of holding the line for the moment. There'll be organisation to do in the next episode, uh, and I might do that off camera. Um, it just depends. I'll see, I'll see, what, it, see what it looks like. We're getting a lot of forces ready. It's still very, very early days. It's still July 1861, so, you know, it's like the earliest of the early, really. We've got the Navy to build up. We've got blockades to put in place. We've got more troops to recruit once, especially once that new military uh, three policy, the Militia Act three policy comes through. Um, and we'll take things from there. I hope you enjoyed the episode. I hope you're enjoying whatever it is you're doing today, uh, <laughs> as well as watching this, of course. Um... And if you did enjoy the video, do leave a like, leave a comment, help the, help the channel out. It's a small channel and it's difficult to compete with the big boys. But anyway, uh, yeah, so leave a comment, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, come back for more. Uh, there's usually somewhere around five or six videos a week on this channel. Sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less. It all depends on my work schedule, to be honest. But when I have the time, I like to make videos. Well, I like to play games. Now I like to make videos since I'm quite new to this still. I'll catch you later. Tar off and out.